being deeply concerned about the levels of radiation and feeling that the government was lying to them about the dangers in the area. Um, this was a mayor, Katsutaka Idogawa, who was fiercely for nuclear power, was proud to be able to get two more reactors in his town to build the economy, to get tens of millions of dollars, and then turned around after um, the meltdown, after the earthquake, the tsunami, and the ultimate meltdown of three of the six existing reactors. Um, Mayor, right now, you are not the only one who turned around in office. Um, Naoto Khan, the prime minister, also a fierce proponent, is now speaking out all over the world against nuclear power. But just this week, as we flew into Japan, the government of Prime Minister Abe, the most conservative government since World War II, announced that it wants to build more reactors uh, in Japan. How are you organizing? What are you doing now? Without being able to even deal with the consequences of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. The position to promote nuclear power still is something which is just unthinkable to me. And I believe it's really important for the Prime Minister to look at what he's actually being responsible for and have regret and really deal with what they have done before they can actually go forward and do anything. And the disaster now is bigger than anything we can cope with. It's a disaster on international level and huge consequences. So he needs to really recognize this. So who's driving the push for more nuclear power? The country already 30 percent dependent for its energy on nuclear power had plans to make the country more than 50 percent by 2030. But after this catastrophe, who is pushing for these nuclear power plants? The nuclear power system is constructed to use huge amounts of public tax. And this is a very tasty, shall we say, position or situation for the large corporations, and they were really behind this push. However, much public taxpayers' money is being used behind this. And I believe it's so important to prevent our taxes from being used for any of this kind. What has happened to the Fukushima refugees today? There are so many people who want to evacuate but don't have the means to be able to actually do that and are still living in this situation who want to do something but they have no support. And another huge issue is those who are still forced to be living within the Greater Fukushima Prefecture area do not have access to full health uh, measurements, health treatments, and the kind of support that they need. And they're also told that any diseases or sickness that they have is not caused of, by radiation. You are traveling the world. Can you tell us the countries you've been to and why you're speaking there? So I'm working with people all around the world, speaking with people who are working against nuclear power in their own areas. You went to Finland? Finland. Why? Yes. Why? I went to Finland to speak with people who are working against the construction of nuclear power plants in their areas because they knew our situation, what happened to us, and we're trying to work together to prevent this from ever happening to them.
In the United States, a nuclear power plant has not been built in close to 40 years, very much because of the anti-nuclear movement and the cost of what it means to build a nuclear power plant and what to do with the waste. But President Obama has talked about a nuclear resident, uh, renaissance uh, and is pushing for the building of several new plants for the first time in decades. What message would you share with him? 原発の事故は日本の福島の事故ではありません。で、ニュークレアパワーディザスターイズノットジャストオブフュクシマ。人類のそして世界中の事故です。This is a and this meaning is that, well, any kind of disaster is well, three times is the limit. America, Chernobyl, and Fukushima have And we have had the three large disasters, one in the United States, one at Chernobyl, and now Fukushima. The Earth will not be able to cope with any further nuclear disasters. For the children of the future, the future generations, I hope that we can stop this now. What is the alternative? Well, I've heard in the U.S. there is shale gas, for example. And but as well as other forms of energy, I believe it's also very important now to look at how we can have lifestyles that rely less on energy, that use less energy, more efficient in our homes and in our offices. And Prime Minister Koizumi is also suggesting this. Prime Minister Koizumi, very uh, significant that a conservative former Prime Minister also came out against nuclear power. Hi. And I believe that Prime Minister Koizumi really visited places affected by nuclear power to really see what is happening, and he's really speaking sincerely now. I want to thank you very much for joining us on Democracy Now! Katsutaka Itagawa, former mayor of the town of Futaba, where part of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is located. The entire town was rendered uninhabitable by the nuclear meltdown. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. Stay with us after break. Crowdsourcing radiation monitoring. We'll look at how a group called SafeCast has helped Japanese civilians turn their smartphones into Geiger counters. Stay with us. よ、
for Japan by Sara Takasi. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're broadcasting for the last of three days from Tokyo, Japan.